as I mentioned earlier, I've got in studio Dr. Isaac Newman Arthur. He's a clinical psychologist, but also joining us by way of Zoom all the way from Hungary is Paulina Megasi, Senior Finance Implementation Business Analyst. A happy International Workers' Day uh, to all of us, Doc, and also to you, Paulina. Happy International Workers' Day. Um, I don't know how we respond to that. <laughs> I, I, I think it's a happy International Workers Day to you too. Um, I, I don't have any gifts for anybody, so me, I'm just here with the well wishes. Um, it's good to have you both on the program. I'll start with you, Doc, and then Paulina, I'll come uh, to you and we'll talk some more about uh, working conditions in, in Hungary versus what it was like for you uh, working back here at home. And coincidentally, the uh, Mental Health Authority has dubbed the month of May, I believe, Purple Month, yes. um, as it's done in other parts of the world to celebrate, or shall I say highlight, mental um, health issues, which is something that I think is sometimes um, or oftentimes neglected um, in our part of the world. I know the World Health Organization uh, mandates that uh, countries allocate some 15% of their health budget to mental health. I think in Ghana maybe we're oscillating between, is it 1% to 2% stock? Is that still the case or maybe even less? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure of the current figures, but mm. it's around that. I'm not sure of the current right, figures. Right, yes. right. So you would say, what would you rate the current um, state of mental health care in Ghana? Let's say out of 10. Oh, I think now I can put it at 6. Oh, that's impressive. Yes, a lot, a lot has been done by mm. many people. I see. If you look at now, the policies on mental health is better. Uh -huh. Now you can walk into any hospital in Ghana and get a mental health kind of service. Mm -hmm. Even if they can't attend to you, they, they know where to refer you. Uh, a lot more mental health professionals are being trained. Um, now the awareness almost every week, there's a radio station That's somewhere right. where some mental health, something is going on. Mm. Now individuals walk into the hospital to say, I want to see a mental health worker. Mm. You know, those days it wasn't there. I That's think right. the awareness wasn't there. You mm. know, but a lot of mental health professionals, their associations, I'm with the Ghana Psychological Association. Right. I'm their PRO. And a lot of people have worked, psychiatric association of like mental health authority. People have worked and worked. Mm. No, but we don't know all of them. There mm. are people behind the scenes, That's right. you know, top, top, top mental health uh, workers who have worked over the years. So mm. Ghana, if you compare Ghana mental health service to other countries, we are really doing well. Okay, that's yes. very encouraging yes. uh, to hear because we know that mental health issues are very important. What is the stat statistic that one in four uh, are persons, uh, Ghanaians, has some type of mental uh, health well, illness? Uh, cur currently, it's about between 2.2 2, 2 million to about 2.5 million people were diagnosed. Diagnosed, okay. Uh, majority of the people are not diagnosed mm. uh, because uh, one, they don't know that what they experience is under mental health. People use all kinds of alternative ways to, to deal with it. Mm. People make mental health issues, personal issues, and they try to fix it themselves. They mm. don't go to the hospital. Right. And all those people are not accounted for. So right. the figures may be higher. I think it's about 14%, 10 to 15% of Ghana's population. I see. Okay, yes. has some sort of mental health, health problems. problems. Diagnosed. Diagnosed. Yes. And of course, as you say, there are many others that go undiagnosed because, yes. like you say, we made it a personal problem because, of course, some of the language surrounding mental health is still not where it needs to yes. be. There's still a lot of shame associated. And stigma, yes. And stigma around um, having mental health issues. But on a day like this, where it's International Workers' Day, we're talking about uh, the conditions of service for the average Ghanaian worker. Do you think that employers make enough provision for employees as far as mental health is concerned. So in other jurisdictions, there might be uh, somebody who is trained to listen to employee complaints. There might be maybe some partnership with a, a hospital to offer maybe discounted fees for staff to go. I mean, where, from where you sit, what do you think the uh, average worker is able to benefit from their employer? Uh, in Ghana, there is a huge gap. Um, for my moving around, I move around a lot, so... I realize that though they have some idea as to what it is, but I can confidently say that a lot or majority of work environments do not have a mental health policy. Most of their policies, there is no provision for mental health. Is that something that each company should have? Every company should have. Okay. You no, know, they have policies on health, other health-related problems. That's right. But not mental health. Mm. You know, I think uh, just about... A week ago, I concluded in helping one of the biggest corporations in the country. Mm. I don't want to mention him. Develop, sure. 
develop a mental health policy. Mm. And they are so big that you'll be amazed they didn't have it. Mm. They may have certain provisions here and there, but a whole kind of mental health policy, they didn't have it. So that's something that you're also able to assist oh, with, yes, putting together to the that. framework. Yes, I'm able I to do that. So uh, I think that it's not their fault. The understanding of what health is is, is now becoming better. That's you right. Know, a lot of corporations don't even understand what mental health is. Mm. But when it comes to performance at work, mental health is 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 most is maybe more important than anything else. Absolutely. You know, uh, absenteeism and there's something called presenteeism. Presenteeism. So absenteeism means you didn't show up at work. Mm -hmm. Presenteeism means that you came to work but you're not effective. When somebody says, "Oh, today I'm just here in body." Oh, no, no, it's, it's like you are there. We we saw you around, but you are not yeah, effective. The you're spirit, not the the person is Everything somewhere is else. Not there. Got yes, got and you. if you look at excuses from work, if you mm. look at the contributions to absenteeism from work, mental health sits, you know, amongst the tops. That's you interesting. Know, so it's yes. no longer the case where somebody might say, oh, today I have a headache or a flu, but they simply don't feel right. Yes, or they have some things that, that is affecting them. Mm. It's a big issue. Unfortunately, a lot of corporations do have a mental health policy, you know, because mm. they, don't, they don't know what it is. They've not even heard about it. They, mm. So probably out of ignorance, not that they don't want to have it. And mm. usually when you talk to them and you say, oh, you need this, they are, they, are, they are good to go. I'm sure, especially when you tie it to the productivity yes. of the staff. When and it's it, very important. Yes. When you look at disease groups, mm -hmm. right, the cardiovascular problems, uh, the neural uh, problems, if you look at uh, the hormonal problems, infections, big groups of diseases, mm. mental health-related issues and, and in relation to productivity. There is something called dis uh, disability adjusted life years. Looking at your productivity when you are living with a disease. Right. And again to how diseases would shorten your life. So for example, if you would, uh, let's say, live up to 75, but you had some health issue at age 50, right? And you had to live with a disease for five years and you died, let's say, at 60 or at 65. It means that we've lost 15 years of your life. Mm. One, when you were living with a disease, and you will lost you when you could have lived longer. Got it. You see, so we look at the diseases and how they impact on productivity or loss of productivity, mm. right? And if you look at the diseases, you may have cardiovascular problems probably sitting on top. You may have some others, but mental health related problems is third in determining the productivity of people in terms of what I've talked about. Very, mm. very significant. Mm. Most of the things that people even get excuse duties for it's not as important as mental health issues. Got it. And you really can't go to the, your HR and say, I feel depressed. Can I get three days off? Yeah. Or they will say, oh, they will send you to a psychologist for evaluation. Mm. Uh, give her five days, two weeks off. Mm. No, but if someone has diabetes or hypertension, they have some complications or they have a flu, yes. they can go to HR and HR will give them like three days, five days. That's right. But when it comes to mental health issues, we really don't have that. Even how to approach HR to say that yes. I need that time yes. off. Well, let's uh, uh, invite Paulina into the conversation. And again, she's joining us from Hungary. Paulina, again, good morning to you. Happy International Workers' Day again. How are you doing this morning? Good morning and happy International Workers' Day. I'm doing great, and you? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, what time is it in, in Hungary? I'm guessing not too far off from the time here in Accra. Yes, it's actually 10.50, so just two hours ahead. Okay, so just two hours ahead. And you currently work as a senior finance implementation business analyst this one paulina it's a bit of a mouthful so i take it that you're a very very busy lady indeed and you used to work in 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 ghana um and i'm sure listening to dog speak you can identify with uh maybe some of the things that he had to say as far as uh, mental health is concerned are you noticing any big differences as you've changed jurisdiction in how seriously mental health is taken in other parts of the world as compared to ghana Yes, I think he mentioned something about not being able to go to your HR or your boss that you're probably having a bad day or you're depressed. Um, for my company, and I would highlight that for everything that I'm going to talk about is based on my personal experience working here and also experiences that people have shared with me. And so for my company, we have the advantage of having five therapy sessions if you feel that you are not feeling really great. And you can always go to your boss and let him know that you're probably not feeling good because you lost a family member or something happened and you can take a couple of days off. 
Okay. Um, so that's quite um, a, a, a significant. But on a day like this, actually, I should have taken it back um, a few steps. What is the celebration like on International Workers? There's a lot of, a lot of emphasis put on a day like this. It is, it is. Um, it's a holiday here, but unfortunately for me, I have to work because... Oh, um, I see. Well, join the club. I'm working as well today, so uh, I feel I feel your pain. Yes, because um, we are in a peak season of closing the books and all that, so there's nothing like a holiday when it comes to my department, but everyone gets to have the day off. And I think one significant thing to highlight is that even the shops get to close so if you don't get to buy your groceries the day before today you probably mm. will not get the chance to buy anything because everyone is mandated to close okay so that's how significant a day like this mm -hmm. is it's very very important okay i'll come back to you paulina but doc is of course still here with us and we're talking about international workers day um and also mental health issues and how they affect the average worker productivity um and so on and so forth from where you said what would you say is the um, biggest stressor. I know now finances play a big role. Is that really what you say drives some of the uh, mental health illnesses, finance only, or is it uh, problems within the workspace, problems that people come from, ho bring from home? What are some of the big, big ticket items and where do they stem from? So when it comes to stress <clears throat> with workers, <clears throat> there we have the personal stresses and we have the corporate uh, related stresses, right? So. For example, the corporate things, uh, three, <coughs> three big, big things, the, set, the system. The system's put in place to address issues, uh, workflow-related things, <coughs> uh, conflict resolution, uh, reportage of things, bureaucratic things, uh, how memos are sent, response. All those things are systems-related stresses. Mm. There are some places so easy to carry things through, decisions and uh, very, very easy to be able to do things. Then again, another big thing is the setup. You know, the environment, yeah, the rooms, workers, what is available to them. I think last time I went to a certain corporation, very, very nice place. You, know, you enter and your stresses will just crash mm. just by the setup alone. And if you have an open workspace where you have these decks you know, and cubicles and people easy go around, that kind of thing. They even had a kitchenette at the corner where they have coffee, they have tea, they have fruits, they have all kinds of things. You know, when you're tired, you can go and pick something and drink. You know, so very, very, very effective, you know, uh, setup. You know, and um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, everything, the paintings on the, on the walls, those things, we, we take those things for granted. If you work in an office space where every shelf is full, there are books all over the place, there's no... It, that alone is stressful. And that is why when people really want to go and uh, enjoy life or go relax, they always go to a resort or a hotel or somewhere because right. of the setup. So workplace setup is so, so important. You know what, I, I for sure, we have a new studio here. Um, and, you know, not that the old one wasn't up to scratch, but it's a, it's a big upgrade. I definitely look forward to coming into the studio more because it's so much more comfortable. It's brighter now. We have some flowers here. It has completely changed the mood. And in fact, I think on the tracker, we've seen our, our, our station go up since we've done these renovations. Yes, so, so the setup is, is very, very... A lot of workplaces actually take those things for granted. You know, but, you know, workers spend about eight hours of their time every day, some 12 hours in a workspace. That's right. You know, so it has to be very, very comfortable. Even the chair people sit on and all those things, it has to be comfortable enough. There are some places they even have cubicles and sleep spaces where people can go take a nap or something, you know, during the work time. They've already made some arrangements. I know some workplaces where uh, they have a crutch at work. You know, and so mothers can actually take their kids there and feed them. They don't have to be thinking at work, what is happening to my baby? So all kinds of systems can be put in place. So the setup itself, you know, and the structure itself. Then again, we have staff-related problems. At the workplace, a staff member can be the stressor. Mm. So if you have a staff work, a member who is, whose attitude is very, very bad, you know, they may be abusive verbally, physically, they may not be pleasant to work with. That alone is a stressor. If you have a boss who is not pleasant, some workers, their problem is not even a system or setup. Their problem is that person they are working under. So they might have a comfortable office, they are able to think everything, freely, the, everything the is The salary big. is great, mm. conditions of service, but the person they are working under, 
or some member who is in their team makes everything very, very difficult for them. You know, so they come to work and they are always panicking. They are always stressed around that particular person. So individuals and their personality types and their own individual problems they bring to work and all those things, they are there. Then again, if there's all kinds of abuse, physical, verbal, emotional kind, you, we can't tolerate that at workplace. And it doesn't matter whether the person is the CEO or the owner of the, of the there should be internal mechanisms to deal with everybody regardless of who they are. You know, such that people can go to HR and complain without feeling that they will lose their job or, you know, be vilified or they will not be promoted because they made a complaint about a senior colleague. You know, so all those things serve as a stressor. Then in addition to that, the person's own problems that they carry from, 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 the, from the house. Mm. So they may have some marital problem or kids-related problems or parental issues. If they are parents, they may have problems with their kids or if they are under their own parents. You know, some parents are abusive. And That's imagine right. you are being abused by your father and you have to show up at work and smile. It becomes a big, big, big thing. You know, so, and financial issues, accommodation issues and those things, they are big, big stresses. You know, then in addition to that, the person may be battling with a health problem. You know, so a health problem, hypertension, diabetes, bone problems, cancer, whatever, and they have to show up at work. How do they do that? Some people may have addictive related problems and they have to deal with that and come to work. And if you are female, you know, unique female related issues. Imagine That's someone right. is having dysmenorrhea, menstrual cramps, and they are sitting at the, uh, they have to sit at the reception. They can't, they can't be smiling with that pain. Or they come to work and for some reason they are not doing well and the boss is screaming at them. Mm. Meanwhile, they have actual medical problem, which is not their fault. You know, they are in pain, they are bleeding or something. Or someone comes and they're having some abnormal discomfort, whatever it is, you know, personal related problems. So the worker, the corporate issues and the personal issues, they have to cope. Mm, very important. That same person has to deal with both and perform. How do they do that? It's difficult. Mm. So for any worker to show up at work, it's a miracle. You see, and that is why for any workplace, regardless of how effective or rigid the system is, there should be some human something in the system to be able to empathize, not to be quick to judge. You know, I remember there was this workplace where one of the workers was all over the place. You know, so other workers were not happy with it and that kind of thing. You know, and when they were talking plenty, I was just looking at them. You know, so after that, I called the worker to find out ah, what's up with you. And that's when she started opening up the kind of problems. I see. It's a miracle she comes to work every time. Mm. So by the time she comes to work, she's overwhelmed, she's tired. So little, little things become big things. She's mm. always triggered by and always irritable mm. because she's struggling to deal with her personal related problem. Mm. Someone says, oh, uh, you are at work, please don't bring your personal problems here. We, but, are, we, are, not, we are not robots. How do, you, how, do you, how do you just lift it as if it's a briefcase and put it to one side well, yeah, and then leave it there yes, and go to work? It's not possible. Yeah, we are not robots. What right. it means is that we need to be able to help staff deal with those issues so that they can be effective at work. Mm. Though you may have to be professional at work and there are things we cannot tolerate at the workplace, right? But we can't say that your personality should deal with it. Workplaces should have... It's just like someone who has hypertension or diabetes. Yes. Right? Workplaces have all kinds of things to help them deal with that. Mm. Why can't they also have things put in place to help people deal with those other So we issues? have more compassion, you say, for uh, illnesses that we think Physical are more tangible. Issues. We yes. can see and yes. we can see a report yes. or blood to yes. work or whatever. Yes. But when it comes to certain type of illnesses, because we can't see it, we don't understand Perfect. how it manifests. We and don't have that yes. same compassion yes. and or we don't have that same grace. Mental health is part of health. You mm. can, there are four uh, levels of health, physical, mental, social and spiritual. Mm. You know, but on Unfortunately, we pay more attention to physical health issues than, than, than mental rest. health issues. Mm. But people, people go through a lot. So it's always good to have some human face, some humanity with... Even in the most corporate of institutions. Yes, even before you sack someone for mm. something, mm. for a dictionary issue or for a, a, a lack of performance, why not refer the person to see a psychologist or account, some mental health worker, you know, for some evaluation to find out why is this worker because they know they will lose their job. Why are they still doing it? Doing that. It's important. I think as a company, you make yourself more attractive if you are viewed as a kind of company that has empathy. Who wouldn't yes. want to work in a place and give yes. up their best yes. in a place that yes. affords them yes. that dignity? Let's come back to uh, Paulina. And Paulina, you were nodding in earnest at some of the talking <laughs> points that Doc uh, was uh, sharing. How do you marry the two corporate life but also dealing with real life issues? Because we're all human. As 
Jesus Doc has said, you can't pack your strife and say, oh, Monday, I won't take my problems away. Maybe Wednesday, I'll take half of it. How do you deal with that, um, especially in a different jurisdiction as well? Yeah, yeah, you know, I actually really agreed with some of the things he was saying because um, trying to balance, you know, your personal life with work sometimes can be a lot. Um, but based on my personal experiences, I would say that um, I am thankful that we are encouraged to open up because sometimes if you do not speak, no one would be able to know what you are going through. In as much as um, the companies that we work for here have structures to, you know, attend to these kind of issues, mm. it's a little bit more individualized also. You know, in Ghana, you can network, you can have colleagues that you can actually form bond with. But here, based on my experience, it can be a lot more individualized. So if you don't speak about what you're going through, then you might not get help. Okay, so the onus is also on the individual um, yeah. to, to speak up, um, which is also important, Doc, would you say, as much as we're encouraging um, institutions, companies, and bodies to take it seriously, as individuals, we also have to have some markers that will let us know that maybe we are in a period of stress or depression. Give us some pointers. If today we have some, you know, and I know we have workers listening to us, what should inform us that mm, it's time to pause, to speak to somebody, and so on and so forth? Okay, so uh, mental health is in three levels. Your thinking, feelings, and behavior. Thinking, feelings, and behavior. And how that thinking or feelings or behavior is affecting your life. So if your thinking or feeling or behavior is doing these four things, means likely you need help. One, is it causing you distress? So I need some pain because of that. Is it causing dysfunction? Uh, what it means is that you are not able to get easy with activities of daily living. You wake up, you don't feel like going to bath, going to uh, clean. Like you realize that daily living has become very difficult, so you are not functional. Three, is it causing damage to everything around you? Your relationships, your work, your academics. You realize that no, things are not going right because of how you're thinking, feeling or behaving. Then four, is it deviating from social norms? What it means that now you can't fit in a lot of social spaces. You come to work and your presence has become a bit toxic. You are in home and people can't, you know, uh, handle you, you know, that kind. It means it's a sign that you need help. So those four levels, very, very important, right? And these four things, they affect six areas of your life. One, ability to cope and adjust. So when you realize that coping and adjusting to things is becoming difficult, it means you need help. You no, know, we all developed effective ways to cope with things, day-to-day mm. -day things. But when you realize you're really struggling with it, it means there's a problem. Mm. Two, relationships. If you're mentally healthy, you're able to form and maintain meaningful relationships. That's right. So realize that after, in some period, like every relationship is not working. You know, whether it's with your parents or with your kids or with your friends or with your siblings or at work, relationships has become a problem. Mm -hmm. Then again, to identity. You realize that your perception about yourself has now become very, very negative. You're looking down on yourself. You are not confident to who you are again and stuff. It's a sign that you may need help. Then again, too, it's affecting how you pursue your goals in life. You, you keep postponing agenda and appointments. Uh, you're unable to navigate your way through your career the way you expe you're expecting. Mm. Uh, your day-to-day -day goals is becoming very, very, very problematic. Then it means you are likely, you need help. Then independence. When you realize that now you become so over-dependent on people. It's like now even your emotional things, everybody has to make you feel okay about yourself. Right. You know, financially you are becoming a burden. Um, you can't be independent. Everything, you need help with this, help with that, help with that, and realize that you yourself as a person, you are not able to handle uh, your independence in many things is gone. Then finally, uh, you, you realize that your contribution to society has become some way. You, know, you are not making any difference wherever you find yourself. So at work, if you are mentally healthy, you, 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 you are the reason why things are moving on. Right. They give you responsibilities and touch. You are able to do it. Got and it. your presence in any social space is not becoming difficult. Mm. You know? So all these things I've said, they sound pers like personal issues. That's right. <laughs> but not as mental health problems. Mm. Nobody goes and says, oh, doctor, my relationship is breaking apart. Mm. Help me. Oh, doctor, I've realized I've become too emotionally dependent on people. Why? Oh, I've realized that nowadays I withdraw myself so much from social spaces. Or oh, I'm struggling to cope with life. Or oh, now I realize that my presence in, at work at home has become very toxic. There was this woman who I did a screening for, mental health screening at a certain workplace. And 
you know, she's going through so much, so she carries it on to her kids. Uh huh. And the kids now don't even understand what's happening to mommy. Mm. You see. But she, w- she doesn't know that whatever is making her very irritable is under mental health. Mm-hmm. You may have, your mental well-being may, may be impaired, but you may not have a disease, a mental illness. You see, mental illnesses are on another level, but mm. your mental well-being may have been impacted negatively, yet you don't have a mental illness. Mm. Most of the things that we want to struggle through as personal issues, they are mental health issues, but they are not diseases. So that by that you mean that this isn't something that you have to struggle with on your own per se, because there are ways in which a professional will be able to Perfect. help you get to another Perfect. point. Perfect. Okay. Let me give you an example. Um, there was someone who had um, realized that she, he can't take criticisms mm. at work. Why? When he was a child someone bullied him and people started laughing at him because he forgot his lines at speech day mm. and everybody started laughing at him when he was on stage mm. seven year old boy and so anything that sounds like um what do you call it you want to confront him you want to embarrass me he puts up a defense mm-hmm. and he's been doing that from childhood right so if you are at a workplace and say you don't take criticisms lightly but when that person sees a professional, we're able to navigate, you know, through various things to be able to get to the root cause of it. Mm. A lot of the relationships that break apart could have been saved if the person had seen a, a psychologist or a counselor or someone who has been trained. Mm. Most of the current relationship problems they didn't start now. In many years, they've built all kinds of emotional problems for many things in the past. Mm. And unfortunately, they carry it on to the next relationship. And that is true. And, Doc, I can certainly identify with that. Before I'd ever attempted um, therapy, I thought, oh, well, really, this is something that's in my head. How can another person who's not in my head help? But through the um, uh, practical advice of a therapist, I was able to, um, you know, sort out those issues in my mind to the extent that even some of the things my therapist has said in, in past sessions, I still carry it with me. It's like homework almost, or it's a kind of thing that I can go back to and, and reach out for in my back pocket and use that to actually feel better and get on with my day. So it's it's real tangible work that is yes. happening. And I think some people yeah. can't even wrap their mind around that. Yeah. Ah, somebody else, this is what somebody has gone to school for. Or yeah. This is somebody's <laughs> job. They are trained. <laughs> Professionals. And some people even say that, oh, I'm just going to talk. Why should I go? This one is just going to talk. Yes. No, it's not like that at mm. all. It's not like that. There are a lot of people, sometimes they come and say, ah, so why have I been struggling with this for a long time? A long I time. Have long and time. I, I felt the same way. I said, ah, so this thing that I had kept to myself, I didn't want to tell mm. anybody. <laughs> had I known, if I had started doing the work a long time, some of these issues would have been lessened. But Paulina, again, I see you nodding feverishly. You'd certainly identify with what Doc is saying. And I wanted to find out that in, in, in your current workplace, what what are the practical things that uh, your company has put in place? Is there a, a mental health professional that staff are able to, to speak with? Speak to us on that. And also on a, on a personal level, how you are able to um, de-stress and also deal with, uh, let's say, conflict in the workplace. All right. So in my current workplace, I think one of the things that I mentioned earlier is that um, we have access to therapy sessions that is paid by the company. So we have five sessions that if you feel that you are probably not okay and you've had discussions with your boss, then you can sign up for it. It's totally free, right? And I would say that in my personal life, um, one of the ways I do is just actually to work out a lot. (laughs) I try to work out a lot to um, get most of the things out of my mind. But if I feel like it's affecting my job, but sometimes you can see it, your boss can see it. And, you know, during your one-on-ones, it probably comes up that I realize that you're probably not performing as you usually do or you you have withdrew from the team. And uh, what would come up is that do you need some time off or you probably need to go see your GP or is there anything that we can do to help? And so I would say that, yes, these things do come up. But what I appreciate is that they always ask, is there anything that we can do to help you get through this? Okay, so those are some some effective uh, methods. But uh, again, on your own, what are you able to do for yourself if, say, there's no therapist on hand? How do you declutter, de-stress in the workplace or, shall I say, in private life? Okay, so in my private life, um, 
I'm very fortunate to have been open to things like this that I have been encouraged to speak up. And so if I have things going on in my private life that I think that is probably affecting me and affecting everyone around me, I do speak up, I do ask for help, I go see the GP or I schedule a therapy session to be able to know that um, I can get help from everyone and anyone. Mm. Fantastic. Doc, I'll come to you on this one. We've talked about some of the telltale signs that we can all look out for. Um, now let's come to solutions. Well, we talk about speaking with a professional, but what can we do outside of some of these formal interventions? People often talk about, you know, the relaxation, the reading, but give us some more tips on how to deal with stress in the workplace. So uh, to deal with that um, in the workplace, like I said, every workplace should have a mental health policy. It should have systems in place. Some workplace has, have a standby therapist that they can, any, any staff can contact. Those things are important. The setup and all that is important. But individuals, there are things that you can do on a day-to-day -day basis to build mental resilience, right? Sometimes for stress, if you can't deal with a stressor, there are some stresses you can't eliminate. You may have to uh, uh, have certain coping strategies that relieves the stress. So things like your work, at some point, you can't just, just leave your work, you know. So it may be a necessary stressor, but you may have to now do certain things that would help ease the stress. There's something we call the energy bank, right? Where, for example, you have a tank that is full of fuel. That is the energy, right? The more you deplete the tank, the more you have to fill. So most of the stress relieving uh, things is only to be able to fill up what has been depleted, you know. And so uh, some of the things people can do, let me mention them. One, positive attitude and thinking about things. You need okay. to be very, very positive. Okay. A negative attitude increases your stress. So for example, you have an exam coming. Someone will say, hey, this exam, I may fail. Your stress will go up. Mm. Another person will say, oh, people write. Even if I fail, I'll write, I'll write again, I'll move on. Mm. The second person is likely to feel less stressed. And then probably by that, perform better. Yeah, by even perform better. Mm. Right? We all need some small, small stresses to be able to boost energy and stuff. We call them eustress. Mm. You know, we all need something small because the body actually needs that to release all the neurochemicals, the adrenaline, norepinephrine, yeah. and cut, those things. We need that for performance. But when stress becomes overwhelming for a longer period of time, you go into what we call the uh, chronic stress, and that one creates problems, mm. right? So a positive attitude really helps. You know, you have the positive. So someone walks away from your, your life, maybe a lady, uh, loses a relationship, uh, someone will say, all oh, men are the same, men are scam, this, that, mm. that, that. All those things, I was not born to marry, Man marriage is not my thing. Those <laughs> things, very, very negative. <laughs> Another person will say, oh, if you have gone away, go away with your big head. Another person will come. Mm. The second person, though it may be a bit painful, may not be as painful as the first person mm. who is having a negative kind of attitude towards life. So when you are positive, you are not denying the facts. You are thinking about the facts in a way that is more pr productive. Let's say in this studio, you have an exam in this studio at nine. We are around uh, Osu area, right? At the Sawi, right? Yeah. And as at 8.55, you are in traffic on the motorway. Okay. If you cry, you won't get here at nine. If you buy yogurt and sleep, you will not get here at nine. But one will make life more comfortable. That's right. So a positive attitude, very, very important. There's something also called positive self-statements. Mm. You know, where you talk to yourself. I've got this. I'm going to do it. I'll do well. You know, those things we say. In Christianity, we call, uh, we call it uh, confessions. Mm -hmm. Most of these things, because psychologists would tell you, sometimes talk to yourself. They call something Motivate positive yourself. affirmation. Affirmations. You know, you know, you need to do that. Then another thing too is uh, positive friendships. Okay. Right? Friends influence you significantly. Mm. Not every friend should be in your personal space. Got it. So you, at every point in your life, you need to evaluate those who are positive and keep them in your personal space. So you so, say a negative friend can really influence your mind? Uh, they, they will, uh, even a text or a WhatsApp or a conversation can mess up your day. You know, so at every point in your time... Paulina is laughing. You've <laughs> cut off all your negative friends, I'm sure. <laughs> or there are one or two that are still hanging around. <laughs> Well, I try to keep, you know, positive people around me. Uh-huh. Good message. Good and, message. And, and that one is, is your choice. You, at some point, you see, at some time, some friends may be very, very okay. At another time, their presence is really a waste of time. Mm. It's even stressful. You have to keep them at a distance. Mm. So at every stage of your life, there are friends who you must keep, others you must keep at a distance. You may not have to disconnect, but keep at them at a safe distance. Got it. 
you know, because everybody may be necessary at some point. That's right. So sometimes you have to keep them, mm. right? Then again, to rest, uh, you need to make time to rest. There are two forms of rest, uh, sleep and relaxation. Right. Mm. This one, you are speaking to DJ Abiyam specifically. You know, these <laughs> DJs, they have very busy lives from morning to night, morning shows. They are doing all mm. sorts. They don't rest. You know, and let me make this before I forget. Stress is a killer. Stress kills. Stress kills. Almost every chronic disease you can think about, stress is a risk factor. Mm. See, there are four things. Alcohol, smoking, stress, and obesity. Mm -hmm. Those four things. Almost every chronic illness, you can see them there as risk factors. You know, so when you are consistently stressed, you are, you are nearing your grave. Consistently stressed. Because when you are stressed, the body releases all kinds of neurochemicals mm. that influences all kinds of body systems. The cortisol and stuff will influence your sugar immunity and stuff. Adrenaline or epinephrine, your BP and all that. Mm. So there are some people who don't have any risk, other risk factors, but before you like, have hypertension, you say, ah, I know everything fine. Why is this like that? But they are stressed. Stress kills. Right, so you have to make a decision. So rest, make sure you have at least seven hours of sleep every night. Okay. Or not less than five hours. You need that. The less you sleep, the more you lose some, you know, lifetime. You see, so uh, sleep. Then relaxation is when you go sit somewhere very, very cool. You know, every time, maybe once a week or once every two, it's just away from the normal stresses of life. You need that. Massage and those things, it helps. Then again to uh, exercise. You know, exercise is a stress reliever. Mm. Exercise boosts everything in your body, including your mental well-being. Then your good nutrition, fruits, veggies, and those things. And avoid alcohol and those things. They actually destroy your health. Mm. But fruits nu uh, nu uh, and all those things. And sometimes even with nutrition, eating what you feel like eating that day, you know, adds to wellness. Mm -hmm. You know, because for example, you wake up and a food comes to your mind. Maybe you want to eat wachi. So today they are eat wachi. And you go buy and eat. It feels very, very good. People, mm. people don't know that those things help boost your mental well-being. Mm. You know, sometimes when you're eating what you don't feel like, it is like everything is all over the it's place. It's like punishment. Somebody <laughs> said, today I'm watching my finger. So I'm going to eat dry chicken breast with some dry salad. But you know, if you had some banku, at least some cheap meal, it will settle so things. So nutrition is very, very important. Healthy mm. diets, very, very fruits, veggies. You need all those nutrients. Then again, being thankful, be thankful, right? Ungrateful people, uh, they are always counting their losses, mm -hmm. you know, and you're always unhappy, you know. When you are thankful, you see the cup half full instead of half empty, right? You know, so thankfulness really, really helps, you know. Then forgiveness, forgiving people quickly. Unforgiveness is an internal stressor. Got it. Right. So forgive people quickly, you know. Let it go very, very quickly. Because when you, are, when you don't forgive others, you are carrying the pain and the past. It's like a, a huge load on you through the day. So when you forgive others, you are showing yourself mercy. You are being merciful to yourself, not the other person, by forgiving them. Because unforgiveness will destroy you and not the other person. Mm. So let it go very, very quickly. I like what you say. There's a saying. It says... Uh uh, forgiveness means setting a prisoner free, only to realize that prisoner was you. It was you. Mm. Right. Then again, to uh, setting realistic goals and expectations right. of yourself, of others, of the world, of the future, and of God. You know, our expectations is a, is a big trap. You know, sometimes even God is surprised about some people's prayer topics because he knows <laughs> it won't come to pass. You know, some people are praying and God is even wondering. God will call Peter and Peter will swear. <laughs> what about this one? <laughs> you know, some people's expectations so huge. So huge. Like me, every, a million dollars. And, and that becomes the stressor mm. because you, are, you evaluate yourself based on your expectations. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not because you are not doing well enough or you are not putting your best. It's just not the season. Mm -hmm. This season is mango season, so you pass everywhere there's mango. You know, but at other times, you go to the market and you ask for that mango. They will think you are crazy mm -hmm. because it's just not the season. Got it. And life actually plays us in various seasons. At some point, you go viral. At other point, you are really down. At some point, they will insult you small. You know, life is in various seasons. Mm -hmm. And if you don't live into expectations, it creates a big problem. Then also being content with what you have. Right. Contentment is great gain. You know, a lot of people are not content at all. They want to build this, they want to have this, they want to do this. You know, at your age, you want a car, you want this. That becomes a stressor. Before you realize, you are breaking your back for things that may come with time. You know, and you are worried about many things. Sometimes you find a 65-year-old building a five-bedroom house for what? And even that building, in the next five years, the, the next generation will even find it appealing. 
Mm. They will break it down. Mm. You know, and build an ass. So all your sweat will be broken down at some point. Sometimes it's just being content with, with life. Then again, simplifying your life. Right. You know, simplify things. Instead of an email, why not a WhatsApp? And why not a phone call? Instead of fork and spoon, why not your fingers? You know, there are things that... We, we, we put some stresses on ourselves. Yes, simplify your, your life. Instead of five cars, why not two cars? That mm. won't give you a headache. Mm. Instead of a five-bedroom, why not two-bedroom house? You know, so the simpler your life is, the better. Some people have made their life so complex that even accessing them becomes more difficult. You know, why not take things, you know, very, very cool? Yeah. Then again, you need to stop comparing yourself with other people. It's very, very stressful when you want to become like someone else. You know, a lot of people are losing themselves because they want to become photocopies of another person. Got it. You know, so... That's not going to bring you happiness. Be you. At workplace, focus on you. Right. You know, be a better version of yourself. That's right. Instead of wanting to be a photocopy of someone else. You know, because we all have the capacity to become better versions of ourselves. Absolutely. Through development, through maturation. Right? But when you focus on your gift, focus on your own timing... Not everybody is married, I have to marry. Or everybody is wearing this, I have to wear mm. some. Everybody, look at my workplace, my colleague, he's just promoted, I have to be promoted. You, you are really worrying yourself. You know, you are putting on due pressure on yourself at the workplace. Mm. You know, then again, to encourage, uh, what do you call it? Prayer and meditation, it helps. Mm. You know, it gives you better perspective to Absolutely. life. Absolutely. Really, really it does. Prayer and meditation is one of the big things. Then we also advise married couples to have sex even when they are tired. Sex eases stress. During intimacy, a lot of chemicals are released. Endorphins, dopamine, oxytocin, uh, serotonin. serotonin, and all that. Mm -hmm. They'll help with sleep, ease pain, uh, what do you call it, will help with uh, immunity and all that. Mm -hmm. so, so intimacy is very, very... So we Won't harp on that one too much. Nine, uh, 23 after 9, <laughs> as the time reads in the studio. But very important message for those yes. who are in uh, long-term partnerships, yes. for married couples. Yes, so th that becomes very, very important. Then uh, probably the last one I'll add is that mind your own business. <laughs> mind your own business. Uh, if you are if you are not going to see some, you'll be a witness. <laughs> well, time check. It is some 23 <laughs> minutes past the hour of nine. We're still live here on 3FM Sunrise on 3FM 92.7. It is International Workers' Day. We're talking about the mental health of the average Ghanaian worker, how you can fortify yourself in the workplace and beyond and ensure that you're being as productive as possible. We're just rounding up now with our guest. Paulina Megasi is still on Zoom with us. Paulina, final words from you. An encouragement to all work home and abroad um, to strengthen themselves as the year progresses. Yeah, so I would also like to say thank you to Doctor because he's probably given a, set, a couple of points that I'm also going to learn from. And so thank you, Doctor. I would say that um, I understand that it's not easy and, you know, we need to feed ourselves and all that. But just as Doctor said, our mental health is very, very important. So we need to speak up. We need to speak up and also we need to put ourselves first. And that's one of the things I've learned from doctor today, to put myself first. Because mm. at the end of the day, if you are not here, life goes on. Life certainly goes on. Paulina, it's been a pleasure speaking with you this morning. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. Paulina is a senior finance implementation business analyst, a very busy lady indeed. So thank you again for lending us your time this morning. I hope she's not stressed. <laughs> She doesn't look stressed at all. If you're watching us on Facebook, you can see Paulina on the stream. She looks very relaxed this morning. She's had time to do some small. I see lipstick there, a bit of eyeliner, mascara, looking very radiant. This morning, I didn't, even, I didn't even put on mascara. The problems I brought with me, in fact, Doc is giving me some gems on how I can have a better day moving forward. But Paulina, thank you so much. So as Doc says, you look relaxed. You're doing something right. So uh, more grease to your elbows for sure. Thank you. Thank well, Doc, as we round up, um, what are your final words for all of us um, today? Two things. Every workplace needs a mental health policy. So workplaces uh, should have some mental health policy. Uh, thankfully, I do that. I help with development of workplace mental health policies and stuff. Uh, maybe after I'll put out my number, maybe if anybody wants to get in touch. Mm. Uh, then again, to um, uh, my final statement to everybody, of all the things in this world, take care of you. Right. Of all the things in this world, take, take care, care of, of you. you. 
You know, sometimes we are available for everybody else, but we are not available for ourselves. Mm. We buy for everybody else, but we don't buy for ourselves. That's true. We make everybody happy, but not ourselves. Mm. You know, at some point, you just have to pause and take care of yourself. Absolutely. You, know, you can't love your neighbors more than, uh, more than yourself. Mm. You need to be able to love yourself. You need to be able to take care of you. Mm. Because trust me, like Paulina said, if you die today, we replace you the next day. Life simply goes we'll, on. We'll pretend we are crying for three days. We'll be confident enough to come and drink cook at your oh. one week. People at, be looking for takeaway at your funeral. Uh, at your funeral, we'll come and eat fufu. And, and you are history. <laughs> and we have to think about that. Even Queen Elizabeth is dead. That's right. Even Queen Elizabeth is gone. It's gone. So sometimes I think, ah, this Hitler and all those people, Abraham Lincoln, Charlie, were fighting things. Hey, these guys are dead. They are gone. They are gone. So just take care of you. And especially for mothers, take care of yourself. Because mm. mothers, sometimes a mother will ask, what will you eat? And they will cook. Then they will eat some. Why not ask yourself, what will I eat today? Mm. Cook for others to come and eat, eat. eat some. We, we, we neglect ourselves. That's right. Right. And this month is Mental Health Month, mm. Purple Month. Right. Uh, Mental Health Authority has dedicated the whole month of, of May. Mm. Uh, it's Purple Month. So, so you'll be very, purple, purple you'll be very uh, busy oh, throughout the month plenty, of May. Plenty, I'm sure yeah. you'll be doing a lot of what, uh, media <laughs> engagement, a lot of yes, media yes, rounds. plenty, plenty. Mm. So... Uh, we're hoping that this month will be able to create a lot of awareness mm. on what mental health really is. And this week we are focusing on pregnant mothers. Okay. Pregnancy is not a disease, but it's a door to major problems. Mm -hmm. So if your wife is pregnant, uh, you can't let her cook as she used to do. You can't tell, let her wash the way she washes. Mm. You can't, you have to modify all her activities. You, you need to step in. Even if you have to wash, wash. Why, why would you allow a pregnant woman to be pounding for food for you? Mm. You know, why would you? It's because pregnancy carrying that big head for nine months. It's no And easy unfortunately, feet. when they come out, they look like the father. <laughs> <laughs> Life is not fair. Right? Life, no balance. But, Doc, uh, yes. we'll certainly be engaging uh, yes. with you throughout the month. Um, we know you'll be busy, but we have a lot of topics that I think uh, we need mm. this type of um, a a engagement on. So, what are the socials for those who want to um, get some more nuggets from you? Uh, I well, I'm not too active on Facebook and ah, stuff. Ah, okay, um, okay, uh, okay. It's stressful. So, I really <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want that yes, stress. I'm Isaac Newman Arthur on all okay. the social. Isaac Newman Arthur. Isaac Newman yes. Arthur. Yes. And my number zero two four nine eight zero two five zero 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 two four nine. 802500. I, do, I don't do this, but I don't know why this morning I feel like doing it. Spirit has compelled you. <laughs> Actually, I don't do that at all. <laughs> so 0249 Absolutely. And I work at University of Professional Studies, their clinic. Fantastic. And it is Purple Month, so we'll be having more of these discussions. Thank yes. you so much, Doc. Thank you so much, Paulina, for your time this yeah. morning. We'll park it here, but there's still more coming your way on 3FM Sunrise on 3FM 92.7. Hey, 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 hey,